Hello, everybody. Scott Hutchbeth here with the Agent Mastermind and Real Estate Animals. If you're on this call, I appreciate it. Coming back from a, hopefully what felt like a really, really, really long weekend and an exciting one, enjoyable one. So I hope that everybody's rested up and ready for what, uh, what I call the rest of the year. So we have a dear friend of mine. I consider him a brother from another mother who is the man, the myth, and the legend. <laughs> who, gets to, who I get the, uh, the privilege of working with on a daily basis. And, man, I could not be more excited to have him on the call today, Mr. Paul Baxter, who has uh, – who just a little bit about Paul. He works with loan officers and real estate agents all across the U.S. And, Paul, I think we even have some in Canada. And don't we have a member in, like, Germany or something? I, I don't know if it's Germany. I know we've got Europe some in the in the Virgin Islands. We've got okay, a couple of members go. in the there Virgin Islands now, and um, we're we're starting to to market ourselves out in Australia. Australia. So Paul has been with us for God, man. How, how, how long has it been? Two years. Yep, a little Three over years? two years now. A little over two years. He he gets the privilege of working with all you wonderful people all across the U.S. and just uh, he gets to hear, be a part of, and just uh, dive in deep with uh, what we're going to show you today, and he really has mastered the what we call SEO, we call it LEO, we call it being on the first page of Google. And Paul, man, I'm just going to kind of sit back, I'm going to help you out here and take notes, and uh, every, every time I get you on the call with this stuff, I always learn more, so uh, take it away, my friend. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, and first and foremost, thank you for the tremendous introduction. I appreciate that, Scotty, and just for everybody listening, I, you, you may recognize I've got a little bit of a cold going on, so I, I know that I sound a little bit stuffed up, and uh, as I'm going through the presentation, if you hear me just in the middle of saying something, stop talking, it's because I've muted myself to uh, to cough a little bit. Um, I'm going to try not to do that, but I, I promise I'll try and make this as a clean a presentation as I possibly can. Now what we're going to talk about is search engine optimization and I will tell you this, everything that I know about search engine optimization I learned by sitting in the seat that I'm in right now. I learned through trial and error. I learned through practicing one way and trying it a different way. I learned through research. I learned through tapping into some of the top SEO minds in the country, um, and and I'm fortunate that I have access to be able to to tap into those minds, you know, based on on the company I work for and the, and the things that I do, and I listen to, I listen to the the people that I work with on a daily basis and and find out what's working for you, what's not working for you, and so I'm going to try today to instill the things that I've learned in you in a f easy four step process. So basically what today boils down to is a is couple of weeks ago we learned how to make our own website using WordPress.com and then, and then taking it a little bit further and creating our own domain names and, and having our own web presence through WordPress. And now you've done that. You've created your own website, which is great, but you want people to be able to see it. So what do you do with your website once, once you've built it? Well, the first thing that you need to do is you need to send the link to all your friends and your family. You need to send your links to your past clients, every one of them. You need to send the link to your referral partners. Hey, check it out. I've created a great new website. Here's the link. Please let me know what you think. Just humbly reach out and send them the link. And then what you need to do is SEO all of your posts so that people searching on the webs will find it. Now, wait a SEO, minute. <laughs> SEO, no, yeah, so wait a minute. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. So let's um, really quick, let, let's just explain that. So, so, so what that is is when people go to Google and they search for, there we go. Okay, I'm, and I'm jumping ahead here. I'm sorry, Paul. No, so, you're, you're quite okay. That's, that's, okay. I, my, I was hoping that it would prompt that question. When, I, when yeah. I put in this part of it, you know, SEO your post for search engine so people can find you on the web, I wanted you right. to say, wait a minute, what does that mean? Right, well, SEO right. is, a, is a big term, and everybody, most people on this call have probably heard it, but most people on this call are probably feel, fearful of it and don't really know how to make it work. Well, what SEO actually is, and search engine optimization is defined as this, is the process of improving the visibility of a website or a web page in a search engine's natural or unpaid organic or algorithmic search results. In general, the earlier or higher ranked on a search engine page or a search results page, the more frequently a site appears in the search results list, 
the more visitors it will receive. That only makes sense, right? If I'm going to show up on the first page of Google or I'm right. going to be one of the first results, I'm going to get more clicks. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. And here's the thing, Paul. I don't know if you know the number on this, but I know it's really, really, really high, and I can probably find out just by Googling it. But when people, they say people, like a high percentage, won't even go to the second page of Google. Is that right? Uh, it's it's actually you know, you know the that? people it's like that eighty percent range. When I was doing the research for this, it showed that approximately seven percent of searchers will actually click to page two in the search results. Seven. Okay. So seven so percent. So ninety three percent of people aren't going past the first page. It's Got it. the nature of the beast. There's results right there. I don't need to see all two million seven hundred and ninety seven thousand. I just need one good result for my search term. And if I find that result on the first page, then I'm done. Typically if I don't find the result I'm looking for on the first page, I'm going to try a different search term. Uh, that's what the typical internet user is doing right now. Got it. So, so seven, okay. There's so, so so by saying that being on the first page of Google is extremely important for continued success. Well, it's absolutely it's it's the number one thing that you can do for for success. If you're going to tap into the internet market, you need to know how to do this because your competition is not doing it. I can promise you that. And you can literally in a very short period of time if you get if you can master these four steps, you will literally own your market. It, it's that easy because just in searching, just in the research for this for this class it's amazing to me how few understand the, the search engine optimization game. And there's some changes that were made this year, and I'll get into those in some later slides of what those changes are, that have made it for the, the companies that are being paid to, for search engine optimization. It's made it quite hard for them to be able to own the front pages of Google anymore. So the, the step one, here is step one of, of search engine optimization. That is keywords. And what are your keywords? Is it, is it home for sale? Is it house for sale? Is it real estate for sale? Or, or don't forget about being specific in your keywords. It's a three bedroom home for sale in Clearwater. So not only do I have some keywords home for sale, but I've also got some keywords that tap into local search, local. which is what Google abs, Google would rather show you local results. Um, they're going to try their hardest to show you the local results first. As long as you're searching, as long as the SEO that was done or the article that it's being looked that's look, that it's looking for has those local results in it. Two bedroom condo for sale in Miami, lakefront home for sale in Orlando, or even a neighborhood name home for sale. Be specific in your articles or posts because your targets are going to be specific in their searches. It's, there's research that's been done recently that shows people now because of the sheer fact that, that there are millions of results with generic searches, Homes for Sale is going to show you millions of results, people are becoming more specific with their search queries. Does that make sense to you, Scott? Absolutely. Now, I got, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, like, so really, Google has went to a more of a local engine optimization, is what you're saying. It, it has, right. and and the and the searchers themselves have also gone to a more specific search term. I want like instead of like a house for sale, they might Google three bedroom house for sale or three That's bedroom exactly, home for sale. That's exactly yes, you exactly know, right. So don't stuff. forget yeah. to include things when you're when you're thinking about your keywords. Think about those things. Think about what is specific to your to to the thing that you're trying to SEO. Um, yeah, I got a great I, I got a great question here that just came in. Um, what what about video? I mean, are these keywords that you're talking about are they important when you're doing it? If you're into video marketing, saying these exact same terms, does that does that have any? That is a phenomenal. Power? That is a great question. And and the things that I the four steps that I'm going to show you, I'll explain at the very end of this presentation. I even talk about that the things that we learned in today's presentation are usable for any blog, for okay. any website for any YouTube video, for any item, any platform that you'd like to get search engine optimized. So by all means, yes, video works the exact same way. Okay, cool. Absolutely works the exact same way. So how do you find your keywords? Well, I'm going to give you, I don't know if there are other places you can do this, but I okay. use 
I use Google to find my keywords. If I'm going to try and optimize for Google, I want Google to tell me what my keywords are. So I go to Google.com. That's a super secret website. Please don't tell any of your friends and family about it. I know it's, it's one that nobody knows. Type in the word in your search terms, keyword tool, and select the first link shows. This is what it's going to look like. I went to Google. I typed in keyword tool. The first link is adwords.google.com.o forward slash. Don't worry about what the link is. Just do a Google search for keyword tool. And the very first link. Excuse right, me. Bro. No, you're good. Yep, yep. The very first link that you see is going to be the Google keyword tool. You'll select that link. The first thing you do is a box is provided. You type in the word or phrase you want to know the keywords for. So what I typed in was homes for sale in Palm Harbor. That's what I'm looking to keyword optimize for. You enter the little CAPTCHA code that it clicks, that it gives you, and click the word search. Yep, it's really that easy to find your keyword tools. This is what it's going to look like. This is the Google AdWords tool that you're using. The first thing is your word or phrases, and you can put as much as just a single word. You can put a longer phrase if you choose to, and I put my CAPTCHA code in search. The results that it gave me are much longer than this, and there are multiple pages of results, but for the demonstration, I just wanted to kind of show you what these results are going to look like, and there are one, two, three, four columns that are of concern to you here. Okay, so reading your results. Column number one are the words or phrases that Google has determined to be the best matches to your keyword terms. So these words over here in column one are the words when, when I typed in Homes for Sale Palm Harbor, this is what Google says people are typing in for searches to, deter, to get the, the information for the same keywords that I've used. That's what Google has determined as being the best keywords. Okay. Column number two is the competition level, and this is something that you want to pay attention to. Palm Harbor Real Estate has a high competition level. However, Palm Harbor has low competition, and the reason for it is because I my terms are homes for sale in Palm Harbor. Well, Palm Harbor Real Estate is a much more accurate search term than just Palm Harbor. So the competition level for people that are looking to keyword optimize for homes for sale in Palm Harbor are not using just plain old Palm Harbor, but they are using Palm Harbor Real Estate. They are using Palm Harbor FL Real Estate, Palm Harbor Florida, Florida Real Estate, homes for sale in Palm Harbor or homes for sale Palm Harbor. There is a difference in the two, and we'll get to that in just one minute. Now, you know, Paul, uh, no, Paul, just uh, talking about what you just covered there. So j just so you guys know, this keyword tool, I just kind of just kind of give you an overview of kind of how I use this tool. When I'm looking to build a blog or a website, I go to this keyword tool and I before I buy my domain name, I look at what's hot right now because stuff changes, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe if you did keyword search tool on Palm Harbor uh, foreclosure real estate or Palm Harbor short sale real estate or Palm Harbor whatever it is, lake lake frontage, stuff like that, you could you could find out what's hot right now and what people are searching for. And yet, as you, as Paul showed here in this keyword tool, it'll show you global monthly searches, local monthly searches, and you can get really specific on some domain names. But more importantly, that'll help you with your content you're going to put up because you'll know if you're adding that content to each post some way, shape, or form, you're going to have better what I call real estate when people search for those keyword terms because that's what they're searching for. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And there is a difference. This third column is showing the number of searches within a within a since the beginning of the month and it, it will reset it, it reset since since I made this slide. Obviously I made this slide at the end of last week, so it was still at the end of August when I made this this slide. If you looked at these same keywords today on the fourth of September it's not going to show these same numbers. These numbers are going to be much lower because it resets at the beginning of the month. Now, the global monthly search means people outside of what Google considers to be the local area. And the local area is based on my IP address when I came to the keyword search tool. Okay, It's not anything that you can set or establish as far as your global area and your local area. It's just what Google has predetermined as what is outside of my local area. 
vice versa, column four, or the, the last column is the local month. This is people who have searched inside my local area. Now you'll notice that a lot of times the global and local search number is the same. And that's because that search is just, because it happened locally, it also happened globally. So if the number in global is higher than local, that means that there were X number of people outside that actually searched for this term as well. So that's people looking to move inside my area from way outside. Does that make sense, Scott? It's kind of difficult Absolutely. to explain yeah, the no. difference yeah, in the no, two yeah. of those, yeah, look, but I there mean, is a little bit of a difference. And I would 100% focus on local engine optimization because that's where people are going to get more specific. When people start looking for homes, they might put in homes for sale in Kalamazoo. And they go, okay, there's 1,273,000, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but there's hundreds of hundreds of thousands of homes for sale. And, and it covers every, every inch of Kalamazoo and the surrounding area, who knows how far out. So it, once they get to where, okay, I want to live in this area, they're going to go more specific to search for this stuff. So that's why going more specific, you don't really care. I mean, it's nice to meet them and greet them and get to know them, but you want to be there when they're ready. Like, so when they search four bedroom home for, for sale in Palm Harbor, you're there because that's the keyword search tool that you used to get there, and that's what they're now searching for. Does that make sense? A absolutely, and what research yeah. has actually shown is that people that are, that are, their very first initial searches, people that are, are at the beginning of their buying cycle, and they say that it's a nine-month buying cycle from the time somebody decides they're going to purchase a new home to the time that they actually make their purchase decision. Their right. initial searches are, are nothing more than homes for sale. Yeah. But in that three-month period when they are narrowing down their search, and, and it is a three-month period, they are searching for things like four-bedroom home for sale in Palm Harbor four-bedroom waterfront home for sale in Palm Harbor. They are very specifically searching. So yep. it's important to tap into those keywords and terms. Okay, so you've, you, you know how to find the keywords. For a blog post, you want to choose about three or four keywords to mix into the article that are all similar. They will all, they're all the same. Palm Harbor home for sale, home for sale, Palm Harbor. They're very similar but it allows me to write an article that doesn't sound completely grammatically incorrect. And I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. You don't need to be, you know, we're not Mark Twain here. We're not trying to be. What? We're not? <laughs> no, we're not trying to be. Um, but you want to have a mix of a few keywords and phrases that, that equal the same thing. So Palm Harbor Home for Sale is the main, and, and I'll show you. Um, how do I choose the right ones? And that's what I'm showing here is, you know, Palm Harbor Real Estate, because it's got 2,400 local searches compared to some of the other things like 880, which is houses for rent. That's not what I want anyway. Palm Harbor, Florida Real Estate only has 1,000. So I'm going to go with Palm Harbor Real Estate. Palm Harbor Homes with an S for sale has 2,900 searches. That's another good one to tap into. Now, I also like this one has 1,900 global and 1,600 local homes for sale in Palm Harbor FL. That's people that are specifically looking for a home in this area, and I want to use those search terms, not because of the number of searches, which has a good high number. I mean, it's still higher than some of these others, but it also has a little bit larger global reach, and it has the word N in it. Notice Homes for Sale, Palm Harbor, Florida, has 19. It's, it also has 1,600 local searches, but I'm not using that because in my article, if I write Homes for Sale, Palm Harbor, Florida, it doesn't fit a sentence as naturally as Homes for Sale in Palm Harbor, Florida. So you want to think about those things and really look at the words that it's giving you in your keywords. Make sure that you're, it's going to make sense in a sentence. So I've chosen these four keywords as my, as my starting point. So you've chosen the keywords that you're going to use. You went to Google. You did the keyword thing. Now you have to choose a title. And I will tell you that you never, ever want to ignore the importance of your title. The keyword for your article should always, and I do mean always, no if ands, or buts, be included in the title. The search engine spiders always look through the title while they're looking for relevant content to the search terms. Search engines put more weight on the, here's a little side note, uh, search engines put more weight on the early words 
meaning if your title is is let's say 17 words long those first five words need to contain your search terms if your title is only 50 characters long or, or five words long then you're good to go but the search engines will look for the early parts of your of your title to find the key words uh, people scanning results by the way when they're looking at the results page after they search your keywords being in the early part of it will get more clicks because they're seeing the keywords that they searched for in the early part of your title so that's going to get more clicks as well does that make sense as far as as far as the title is concerned making sure your keywords and and that they're in the early part a hundred percent not only the keywords but what about um, and this is jumping ahead a little bit but the title is probably god man I gotta say it's number uno wouldn't you say um I, I think the I mean, description it's, I mean, it's is not more, everything I think the description is more numeral uno but the the okay. title being the fact that the title is the first thing that Google is looking for if you don't have your like, keywords in your title then you may as no, may as well not even write the article well, I mean, isn't it? Isn't the title kind of like the subject of an email? So, like, it, that's you, exactly what it is. It's the subject yeah, one. Yeah. So you like you're going to get people's attention, or you're not. I mean, so if your title is something that people are looking for, they're more apt to click on it than not. So if your title is interesting, so I would spend you know more time on my title. Don't give it away in the title, though. Don't give no, away no, enough you to you want to give them but, enough yeah. to 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 know that that's that it's relevant to what their search term is, but but not so much. You want to wet their whistle, not not. Yeah drown them yes Not here's a great them. question if you don't mind um, do you have new SEO words for each blog what if you're blogging about moving or saving energy you want no, to answer that one you, you want to use the same keywords that you used in e each time that you used it but you want to write your content differently so that it's fresh and original yes. content and I'm yes. going to talk about that at the very end what the difference is and and how you okay. cool. how you put together you know if if one post doesn't get you to the front page how you put multiples together to be able to get there yes okay good Dude, great question though so I chose my title based on the fact that my my search terms were homes for sale in Palm Harbor I want to be a little bit specific with it so I've got my keywords in here as well as my local my local tags um, they want to see local stuff in here which is important that's why I did my keyword search for homes for sale in Palm Harbor look I didn't want to just do homes for sale because I don't want somebody in Saskatchewan to stumble across my blog and and they've got no intentions of moving into Florida or into the Palm Harbor area so what you know I don't I don't need to SEO for that I need to SEO for homes for sale in Palm Harbor so that people in my local area find my home excellent now, based on the keywords I've chosen, here's a few other example titles. So, if if you you know to let you know, you can be creative with this as long as you do it the way that it's supposed to be done. Great home for sale in Palm Harbor. Palm Harbor home for sale. Home for sale in Palm Harbor. It, it, each one of those sound about the same, but they're each a different title. So, back to that question that was just asked about do I if I'm doing multiple posts for the same content or the same information do I mix up my key no use the same keywords but mix up the title and mix up your content if there is a specific feature and Scott you taught me about this and and I, I never really paid attention to it till about a year ago when you told me you know do people are searching specific things when they're in that narrowed down feature and I started researching that and and it's it's hands down true excuse me it's hands down true people are looking if they want if, if they've narrowed it down that they definitely want to have that lakefront home or they want to be on a golf course community right. they're going to search yep. golf course home for sale in Palm Harbor yeah you, you know you know one you know one thing this is you know this would be funny to kind of try you know what people go I don't want any neighbors but you never see a post out there with no neighbors like home with no neighbors you know how many people talk you know, to me about that you know what I mean like I, I mean, I hate to say it, but hey, I want to go. Be, I want to be able to do something off my back porch, you know, mm. or I want to be able to walk out and do it out of my backyard and not and not have to worry about it. I mean, the people search for that stuff, but nobody is using those keywords. What the, what the beauty of the system that I'm showing you is, you could do a blog post every other day for all different situations, and you could you could own every search term that could ever be thought of, you know, yeah. private private lot home or or home you know home in the outskirts or whatever the case may be you could own them based on how you put together 
your posts and how you, if you do it the right way, that, that's really the key. We're going to talk about the wrong way as well, so we'll, we'll be talking about those things in addition to. So step three, you have a killer title. It has your top keywords. Now it's time to actually write the article. And I know we're not writers here, but you don't have to be to make this work. Contrary to popular myth, there is no specific number of words, maximum or minimum, to search engine optimize your blog. I've heard everything from, oh, it must be a minimum of seven to eight hundred words, or it has to, you know, maximum nine hundred words, or the SEO blog. It, that's a myth. You write your story, or, or the number of words is determined on whether or not you were able to tell your story. So, you know, if you're if you've only got seventy two words, well, my my guess is is that you didn't tell your story very well. So you're probably not going to get SEO'd on a 72-word article because, quite frankly, you don't have enough room in there to sprinkle your, your, your keywords, and you're not telling a story well enough. That, that's you, know, Paul, you know, Paul, you hit a hot button with me when it comes to a story. I can't even tell you how important it is to relate to a situation that other people will be coming against. Like for example, like buying a lake home. It's not just about buying a lake home, it's about buying a home where you can enjoy the family and sip and watch the water go by and watch the, you know, uh, maybe sit by the campfire while viewing the lake or just sitting on the porch watching the boaters go by with all their uh, patriotic flags on or whatever. I mean, whatever it is, that's the story you need to talk about because if you if you can create a story like if 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 I see something that's of interest to me like a sports team or somebody like your own private ski course there's here's a perfect example so this house had its own private ski course of course it was just a house on a lake so so I could have I could have marketed it like that so house on a lake but it said own private ski course so I so I tweeted out private your own private ski course and that's it so I I didn't even say there was a house for sale you see what I'm saying? So it's all about the story. It, it is absolutely all about yeah. the story. You know, that's one of the number one keys that you're going to learn today is that you're not writing a blog post. You're you're literally you're writing an article or a story about the item you're looking to SEO. And yes, we're focusing on the homes for sale thing. We're 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 real estate agents here and and that's what's important is getting our 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 li you know that's what we do is we sell homes so getting our listings <laughs> seen by more people that's what we do but the terms are it's the same whether you're talking about a, a you know selling a ski boat and you want more people to see that ski boat if you paint the picture and tell the story with the white right, right words mixed in you're going to sell that ski boat you know okay here's the here's is there any limit in creating keywords now here now the thing is it's not about the limit it's about the right ones and then when it comes to a perfect blog post they say right around 4 to 500 words that's All that's right. yeah it's and you couldn't have said that any better there's not a limit to the number of keywords you want to use but you don't want to you don't want to confuse the search engine if i used 50 keywords in a 400 word in right. a 400 word blog well I've used 50 keywords all of them just one time in my article it, Google has no idea what the relevant keyword search would be for that for that particular article so you want to make sure that you're using the specific terms multiple times but you want to be careful with that keyword now, density that leads before, us to hey, what we're you, talking about right now is keyword density However, before you cover this, Paul, before you cover this, I want to mention something that's really important. I think when it comes to you, like some people are saying, what about a video type thing? What about you know how do we how do we um, keyword or how do you get so many words? Well, here's the thing: is I I'm I'm great at I mean I'm great at saying stuff, but when it comes to actually putting it in words, I'm not that good. And I'll just be up front and admit it. So what I do is I actually record myself and then have a transcription is transcribe it. So if you got a two, two and a half minute video of what you want to say, because you can sit, most people can have a conversation or tell a story, but heaven forbid I try to write it so it actually looks right or has the right grammar, all that stuff. Let someone else that specializes in that do that. I do the video, I do the recording, give it to them and let them transcribe it. For I bet you could probably find someone on Fiverr to do it for you. Absolutely, you can. Just be very careful about copying and pasting, and we'll and we'll cover that part in just a couple of minutes on 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 exactly that subject. Um, keyword density is basically what we're what we're talking about right now, and and that is not a myth. 
um, three to seven percent for major keywords is best and one two to two percent for minor if your keyword density is over ten percent it's gonna look suspicious or, or it's gonna look like a black hat trick they used to do called keyword stuffing and it's not gonna look like naturally written text now trust me on this your blog post if you write it correctly with keywords correctly it's not gonna be the most grammatically correct <laughs> paragraph or story you've ever read because it's going to say funny things like this beautiful three bedroom or four bedroom home for sale in Palm Harbor can now be yours. Imagine living in this beautiful four bedroom home for sale in Palm Harbor with its beautiful views of the of the Gulf of Mexico. Your kids could enjoy this beautiful four bedroom. I mean you're you're sprinkling it in on a on a paragraph or a article of 400 words. You don't want to have you don't want to have your keywords in there more than six times, six, seven times, because what will happen is, is Google will see that as keyword stuffing. That's when the penguin gets involved, and trust me on this, you do not want to anger the penguin. Does that make sense? Don't anger the penguin. Let me tell yeah, you what the penguin evil. is. You know, the penguin I thought was a pretty nice animal, but man, why did I mean... Uh, let me tell you what the penguin is so you understand. In May of this cute. year... Google Google has an algorithm that that determines the ranking and it has there are 120 different things that are involved in that algorithm. Well, in 2012 they launched a new software program to enhance that algorithm. Penguin what it does is it effectively effectively took away the ability of the black hat SEO practices like keyword stuffing, like meta tag stuffing. Um, like over backlinking people used to there were services out there that you could pay that would put 175 backlinks to your site well that was great back before the penguin with penguin if they're not relevant backlinks you're gonna get deranked and it is much harder to get a site that has been deranked back to the front of Google you may as well delete the site and start over um, it also rewards the penguin software not only does it can it can go the negative way but it also does the positive thing and that it rewards white hat SEO practices with better search page or SERP results search engine page results what that is is if you do it the right way and you've sprinkled the right amount in it will actually boost your rankings quicker than it used to before penguin software so in essence you have to keep your penguin happy the way that you keep your penguin happy is paint just write your article in a normal way paint the picture to your viewer tell them what it is if you're you know if if it's a listing your SEO and tell the viewer why this would be a great place to live you know imagine your morning coffee on the back deck overlooking the gulf of mexico or as scott said you know imagine imagine lakefront living where you can enjoy your family and have the great barbecues overlooking beautiful lake michigan Sprinkle, yes. not spread your keywords into the article where you're painting that picture. So in essence, what you're doing, you're not a writer. You don't have to be a writer, but you know your area. You know what your home is. You know what's in the home. You know what the features are. You know what's nearby. Just write about those things. Your article will not always sound grammatically correct. But trust me on this, being grammatically correct is far less important than using the keywords or phrases exactly as they are shown in your keyword tool. So what what does that mean? Look, people are going to find it, and yes, they'll read. If they do read your article, they may say, "Wow, this guy writes kind of funny." And but that's okay. The search engine, the penguin, he doesn't care whether you're grammatically correct or not, or whether it sounds like it flows nicely. He just the penguin wants to know that you're not stacking your keywords together and that you're doing it the right way by creating original, relevant content make sure that your content is fresh and original never ever copy and paste never ever copy and paste I can't repeat that enough never copy and paste from something else that's on the web the reason being is the penguins gonna see it as not original content and it will derank you once you've written your article you want to make sure and you've got your keywords in there you want to make sure that you bold italicize and underline all of your keywords and phrases in the article this beautiful 
Four bedroom home for sale in Palm Harbor, bold underlined italicized, is now available. Imagine yourself enjoying the sunny mornings that have made Palm Harbor, keywords right there, famous. You can now own this place of real estate in Palm Harbor in Florida. So, yeah, it doesn't sound grammatically correct, but I've got my keywords in there. Again, make sure that you bold, underline, and italicize your keywords when you're, when you're creating your posts. It makes it stand out so that Google sees it a little bit clearer. Okay, so you're almost there. You've got a killer title. You've written a fantastic article with your keywords sprinkled in. You've made them stand out by bold, italicize, and underlining. You're done, right? Well, yeah, man. not quite yet. Not quite yet. One last step is no. we need to spruce it up. Just a little bit, we're going to spruce it up. So how do we spruce it up? Well, we add two or three links back to your website. Now, what a link back in this situation and I'm not talking about links back where your your sites attached to someone else's and theirs is attached to yours what I'm talking about is simply doing a couple of hyperlinks in your actual article to relevant only use relevant links again remember the penguin if you mention like a great country club or in your article you can hyperlink the words country club to that country club's website does that make sense Scott Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Link backs are so important in that. What we usually do is find like community link backs. I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, but like, um, lo, like especially if you're doing properties, school is a big one. Like, so like the local school of the property is a, mm -hmm. a huge link back. School is um, a huge one, and that's what I typically use when I'm doing okay. a property listing. Is I'll talk about one of the local schools. However, I'm not going to put a link back to the school in a post or on homes for sale palm harbor i'm not going to link back that to a school because i haven't spoken it's not a relevant link back so if you're going to use a link make sure that it is relevant if i want to use a link to a school that's seo'd already i need to mention that school in my article it's important to make sure that it's relevant you must 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 have a comment of some sort in there to use the link back for it now you can also add a video to your post to support the keywords. The video must again be relevant to the post. Remember the penguin. If you post about the wonderful beaches in your area, do not embed a video of a beach a thousand miles away. So if I post about how beautiful the Clearwater beaches are, I don't want to put a, a video of a beach from Hawaii in there because it's not relevant to what I've posted. Now for both your links back and your video, use Google to find the link. So if I did in my article I said, hey, this, this beautiful home in Palm Harbor is near one of the greatest country clubs in our area, I want to go to Google and I want to search for that, that specific country club. So I'd look up Innisbrook Country Club. And whatever the top search engine result for Innisbrook Country Club is, that's the link back that I'm going to use because it's already SEO'd, you guys. Same thing with a video for the beach. I'm going to do Clearwater Beach video. And the very first video it shows me in the Google search engine results is the one I'm going to link back or use for my post or my article because it's already SEO'd by Google for the relevance of the keywords I'm using. Scott, does that make sense? I know that's that's... No, yeah, it does. Here, here's the question that I got, and, it's, and, and th th this is a, a great question. Um, how do you do a link back? And so we're talking about link back. Link backs are is if you were on a website and uh, you want to you want to show one. Is that okay? Um, yeah, I can show that. Um, Actually, you can show it right here on the on the PowerPoint slide if you wanted to. So if I were to say the schools in Palm Harbor are the best around. So what I would want to do is I would want to link back schools in Palm Harbor. So I'm just going to go to Google and I'm going to type in type in Palm Harbor High School. So Palm Harbor University High School dot org. That's the very first link back. So guess what? That's the first result I got. That's the best result because that's the one Google said was the best result. So I'm going to copy that URL address, and I'm simply in my post. Right here is the link. I'm going to click on the hyperlink, and I simply put a hyper. I'm going to paste in 
that URL address and add link. I have now backlink or hyperlinked that part of the post. Does that make sense? A absolutely. Yep. So what you do is you highlight it, click on the chain link, put in the link that you want it to go to when somebody clicks on it. So it's called the link back. That's it. That's that's yep. all there is to it. It's it, there's nothing. There's nothing tricky about it. There's nothing super difficult about it. It's just like putting a hyperlink in an email that you've written to somebody. It, it's just a hyperlink. And what that link back does is it shows it's relevant to other sites that Google has, has already tagged as being search engine optimized for those keywords. Does that make sense? Yep. I hope yep. that answers that question. Absolutely. All right. That's all there is to it. That's it. Right? That's it. This technique... These techniques work for any web-based platform. Active Rain, it works for your WordPress blogs if, you, if you've created the website the way we've shown you over the last few weeks. It works for your blogger.com blogger blogs. It works if you're, if you're on ePropertySites. sites, it works for the blogs in there. It works for any of your templated websites. It, yes, it even works for your YouTube videos. You can do it on your YouTube videos. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, that being said, some places will work faster than others. Active Rain, Blogger.com, ePropertySites, property sites, even real estate marbles for those of you who are using real estate marbles. They're going to get you fast results if you do the steps that we've just gone through based on the number of posts with the same domain name in the URL. And what I mean by that is if you do it inside of Active Rain on your on your Rainmaker account, your your URL or your posts You okay, brother? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, right. Your posts will say activerain.com forward slash the title of your post. Blogger.com forward yeah. slash the title of, your title of your post. Is there a question? Yeah, here's a great one. It says, uh, and so this is coming from Kate Smith. I appreciate you joining us today, Kate. Uh, it says, how do we submit to search engines? And that's kind of what we're showing you is how to show up on the search engines. You don't actually submit to them. Once There's you once you click the button that says and and on WordPress specifically, once I click this button right here that says publish, I've now submitted this post to the search engines just by publishing it. So it's publish, it's make public, it's activate. Um, whatever the blog platform that you're using or the website platform that you're using, once you make it active, it's it's submitted for review to the search engines. Yeah, now, and then little, little spiders come out. Little spiders come out. Yep, little spiders come out and start looking for stuff and start finding the key elements. That's one of the reasons why you underline, bold, and italicize on your blog posts is to make <laughs> sure that the key elements are being seen by the search engine spiders. Does that make sense? Here's another one. Here's another. Yeah, here's another one by James. It said, "Would linking back to your e-property site relevant topic speed up the SEO?" Absolutely, 100%. Absolutely. So, putting a link back. So, like, say you're writing a post about a property, and you put that property address, like four bedroom home for sale in Palm Harbor. Maybe that link back would be to the e-property sites. Whoops, we lose you there, buddy. I think I lost you. I think we lost you. Still there, bro? Yeah, Already sorry about there. that. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Okay. So I had to clear my throat for a second there. Um, I actually right, no did worries. exactly that on, on, on this blog post and this example that I'm showing on this particular slide. Um, I put the address of the property listing and then linked it back to the actual single property website that I had created, whether it was any property site or I done it before where I created a property listing on WordPress and then used that as my link back on my other on my blog post for subsequent blog posts. It links back to the same site again so it's showing that post as relevant to those search terms. That's the key is make sure that it's showing as relevant to those search terms. Now, here's what here's what I would recommend too is some people are asking so should I use outside links or inside links or whatever so I would try both and see which one Google likes better and then you I mean you're gonna get to where you're testing stuff and you'll find out that this one showed up better why did it show up better well I had a link back to what what was Google seen as relevant content to 
my my headline or my subject line or whatever. So whatever it is, I mean, it's, you're going to find stuff will show up in 24 to 48 hours. You're going to find stuff that never shows up. It's just, it just depends on if it's all relevant content that has to do with the subject, and then it's all the same all the way through. Would you say? It, yeah, it absolutely is. And if you're if you're starting from scratch, if you have a WordPress site that you've created and and you've bought your own domain, there's no links back. You know, there's there's not a whole bunch of URL addresses that are already already showing that 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 is relevant. So it may take you three or four. It, typically, it's about four before SEO will start to take effect. I had one guy in in New York that that it took us literally four on the fifth post. We finally got to the first page of Google, yeah. but it we did the same thing over a week and a half period of time, and and lo and behold, now he's competing with people in New York that are paying six and seven thousand dollars a month. To, to have the same results that he paid nothing for. Wow. Okay. So it, it, that that's huge. That's <laughs> huge. So <laughs> and go yeah. on Google and and here's the proof in the pudding. You know, go Google search four bedroom home for sale in Palm Harbor and you'll see my post. It's these are the paid ads. These are these are paid ads. That that basically, if you're going to do the AdWords paid ads, you're going to be on these top one of these top three. Now. Um, if you remember listening to, uh, was it Carl that spoke about this last week, Scott? Yes. That, that yes. said the, it, it, those paid ads on the top. The yes. typical person they get clicked far less than than the free ads below. So yeah. yet the paid ads will work. It'll get you up to the top, and you don't have to worry about SEO. You can put no words in your article. It it all bets are off in terms of SEO if you do a paid ad. But those are pay per click, and you're gonna pay every time somebody clicks on that ad. However, you're not going to get clicked as much as if you were one of the top three that are not part of the yellow box paid advertisements. Okay. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of people on here that have in, and this is so great to see. A lot of people have different blogs. They have a ton of different blogs, and they post the same thing to each blog. Would you recommend? And this is what I've been telling people: is use. Uh, there's a service called Spunrite. It's called spunrite.com. And it allows you to throw in an article, and then it spins it or sp I mean, it spuns it, whatever, and it it tweaks it for you, so it's not the exact same article, mm -hmm. which might get you uh, one more ranking, or if you have one or two of your blogs show up on the first page of Google for the same article, you might have to do a little work, uh, a little work with linkbacks, or it maybe add add pictures to it, or video to it, or something like that. Yeah, I, I was gonna say if you if you're gonna do something like that, definitely you know go ahead and do that, and it'll respin your article for you, but. Take Take what they spit back to you and rewrite that yourself. There you go. So that you're not copying pasting. <clears throat> yeah. um, because again, copy and paste, even even from a Word doc, you don't want to copy and paste because it adds extra HTML that can be picked up as meta type of, of coding. Yeah. And, and it can ignore those words that are within those codes. So you want to make sure that you're typing in your original content into your posts or into your into your website page builder. Um, so okay, Bill's so question is: Is what do you mean by three or four posts? Yes, blog posts or new articles. If you're if you if it's a website that you're looking to maximize or optimize, it would either be new articles for your website or new articles or blog posts. Yeah, three or four of them. Um, once you've done that and they're the same and you've followed the rules and you've got you've maximized your you've maximized all of your words and your keywords um, with some backlinks and bold underline italicize, you're going to start to see results. You'll start to see yourself moving up to the top of Google. Yeah, and it's uh, s p u n w r i t e dot com. So it's spun s p u n and then write w r i t e dot com. So that's the one that I that I um, we, we've used a bunch of times. Um, how many day? Here's a good one. How about bold italic? Let's see who's asking that question. I just missed it. A uh, bunch of questions from. I appreciate you guys asking questions. By the way, this is really good stuff. Uh, and Paul, I appreciate you being here. Um, let's see. And remember, for the recording, and to, you know, and I would 100% work with your loan officer on this. Contact your loan professional and and together test different blog articles. Or posts that go out. Maybe you post on your platform, have them post on theirs, and then just see which one shows up first. You know, at the same time testing stuff. So you can, you know, it's just why not work together on it to see 
which creates more exposure for both you guys. Absolutely. Um, about, Vera has a fantastic question here. If you don't mind, I'd like to address this oh, one. This ahead. is a great question. It's probably on everybody's mind. The question is, is it better to use a hyperlink going back to your website than the URL itself? Meaning, should I in my post say, check me out on my website at www.meetpaulbaxter.com or should I say, check me out on my website and then hyperlink the words, check me out on my website to my I would say I would try to use the keywords in a sentence and hyperlink to the site rather than putting in the actual URL address to the site itself. Uh, the, it, it will work in a very similar way. It's still a link back to a relevant site as long as you're speaking about it relevantly in your, in your post itself. But I always like to use my keywords and maximize the, the amount of exposure those keywords are going to get inside the algorithm. The algorithm is looking for the keywords, and then it's looking for the – a hyperlink is going to be relevant to it. It's going to look to see if that hyperlink is relevant and what the ranking of that relevant hyperlink is, and then it's going to give me more power or it's going to boost my rankings by number. It's kind of like a math game. You just got to keep adding pieces to it. And as you add it up, you get a bigger score. So the goal is is to score more touchdowns, right? So as Absolutely. I add things to my blog post, another keyword with a, a good hyperlink or or something to that effect, I'm going to increase my score. And it's called. I mean, we I I haven't done any playing around with this is through Fiverr, but it's F I V. Here I'll just put it in there. F I V E R R dot com is what it is. All right. Um, we have actually had a couple Fiverr, you know, now that I take that back, we have had a couple Fiverr employees type us 400-word articles mm -hmm. for, uh, for blog posts with a specific topic. So, and, and Bob's asking there. a good question just about that specifically is what about copying and pasting articles into Notepad and then editing? So if I got Fiverr to write me an article, I would post – I would paste it into Notepad and I would edit it and make it my own. I'd change a couple words up and make it original that way. Yes, you can do that, um, editing it and – editing it. Uh, that's a funny word and it didn't sound like it came out right, but editing it in notepad is going to strip out all of the coding and stuff bob you can do that just make sure that you when you post it in go to the back end click to to html so if i'm on a blog post if i click from text to back end this is showing me the html or the coding of what i've done so far just make sure it does not have any additional coding in here that you would like that you don't want to have because it can block google from seeing your keywords Okay, so Dave is asking, how many days should you spread the three to four, three, four, five post overs? Like, how often should you post a blog post, like, or put up content? If you if you made five posts and and posted them all within an hour, it's not going to work for you. It's going to Google's going to see that as a black hat black hat tactic, and it will serve to derank your site. You typically want to do a new post if you're if if you've got a post, you don't want to do a new post with a similar SEO for about 48 hours. So for five posts, you, you take a week, a you know, week to 10 days. One a day? One yeah. a day? or You can do one a day. It's not going to overdo it. Um, but if it's the exact same keywords and you're just rewriting the article to, to mix it up a little bit, you don't want to do that every day. Okay. Now, do you know, and I don't know if you know the answer to this, do you know if video outpulls text or is text still more relevant and to a to a keyword search, it's in a blog post. The text is what they're looking for. The only thing okay. they're looking when you put a video in, the only thing they're looking for in the video is the text that is surrounding that video and whether or not that text is relevant to your post. So, so the what, video okay. itself is not carrying any weight. It's the text that is connected to that video. So how about taking a video and then having it having somebody transcript it and then putting the text below it? With keyword search, with keyword tools and like searches and then link backs and stuff like that, that might make, absolutely you know, that might have some that might that would be pretty because then you're then you're 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 fitting both of Google's loves video because they own YouTube they want to put it up there. Well, Google loves that, to show their, they'd rather show their own stuff more than anything else in the world. So with absolutely. with video, if you're going to optimize using video, only use YouTube. 
um, because YouTube yeah. allows you to do some things that others just don't allow you to do. What they allow you to do first and foremost is they allow you to optimize your videos. So right. I can come yeah, in absolutely. here by editing. This description is the same as a blog post. Yes. This title is the same as a blog post. These tags are where I can actually do meta tags. Now, I learned something recently that I did not know about, and this is something important for everybody to remember. Don't concern yourselves with meta tags and meta descriptions anymore unless you absolutely are looking to own Yahoo and Bing. Um, Yahoo and Bing are cool. They're, they're search engines that, that a couple of people, I think, are still using. Uh, but the world is using Google, so, so this class was specific about optimizing for Google. Yahoo and Bing are still looking at meta tags and meta descriptions, but Google's algorithm does not hold any weight on meta tags and meta descriptions any longer. Here, Anthony, uh, Anthony has a great, great, great point, and I was going to bring this up, and then he put the question up here. So it says, how about a blog commenting? So, you, so what he's saying is go to, go to a blog that's already showing up or, or, or a website that's already showing up that allows a comment and say something nice about the article, but say, hey, I also check out my article at my website. So now your comment is showing up on this number one search criteria inside the first page of Google when somebody visits this article if they're searching for it that is that is brilliant man Good that, job, man. that yeah. that's that's a brilliant. great concept um, the dilemma with that is I don't know that that would work it would be a link back to your site um, the dilemma is is that most blogs that allow for comments are mm -hmm. moderated comments correct that there's a correct. moderator that has to accept that they actually have to click a button that says allow this comment to be posted on that page um, right. With you putting a link back to your, uh, uh, you know, a, a URL or a link back to your site in that comment, I don't know that many moderators would actually go ahead and click that as allowable on their site. Um, it's I worth a try. Nice. It's nice. absolutely yeah. worth a try. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. that's the cool thing about SEO. There's no exact science. There is definitely a thing not to do, but there's right. no exact science of what to do. Yes, and Google keeps changing it, so we're all we're all always on our toes, right? Um, let's see. So, the exa so I think Anthony's asking. No, I think it was Anthony. He's asking. Um, no, it was the one before that. It was uh, Dennis. So Dennis says. So example isn't a web page so much as a property listing. How do you do this with the home web page? So more or less, you're taking. Uh, there's certain websites or complete property marketing systems that give you HTML mm -hmm. that you can take the listing and put it as a blog post on your blog site. So uh, get with your loan officer that sent you here to see if they have the system, and if not, hook up with me, and I'll, and um, I'll kind of show you. What Dennis is talking about is, is all the things that I've talked about are, are for, for a blog site. It's okay. the exact okay. same for a website. There is zero difference in the way that you SEO a website than the way that you SEO a blog site. Your, your website allows you to add pages, and that's what I meant by this works for a templated website. Your, yeah. you, most of your website, unless you're a programmer and you're, you're creating your own pages and writing your own HTML coding, and if you're doing that, you know SEO better than I do anyway. Uh, yeah. But if, you're, if you've got a website, it's a templated-based website, you're going to a new page, you're writing articles for your website. Your articles need to be search engine optimized by sprinkling in your keywords 3 to 7% of the time. Make sure that your article tells a complete story and paints a picture. Make sure that you've bold, underlined, and italicized your keywords in that article that you're writing for your, for your website. And make sure that you backlink or hyperlink a couple of the key elements to relevant sites that are already SEO'd on the Internet. So it, yeah. it literally is the exact same way. You just, you know, you may need to get with a developer to find out, you know, how do I put updated information? I'd like to update my about me section. I'd like to update my home page section on my website. And that's where yeah. you write an SEO article. Yes. A couple things here that, want, that I want to cover before we uh, head out. Number one is most people that try doing this to get exposure, build their brand, put up content to where people are finding them, only do it for 30 to 45 days because they're not seeing any any results right off the bat. That's where you, whoever does this consistently, whether you do it yourself or you hire somebody to do it for you, will have a huge, massive advantage when it comes to repetition, putting up content all the time, 
over and over and over again for months in and months out. That's why you see some agents are always, like you Google them and they're like, God, man, they're everywhere because they're posting about relevant content. They're talking about the changes in the industry. That's the nice part about WordPress is you can stay up to date with what's happening because stuff changes every day in our industry. You know, maybe the percentages are up, like the percentage of like the, the, the value of homes are up 2% in Michigan. What a great article to talk about with people that are sitting on the fence thinking about buying a home today where they're like, okay, I'm waiting for the bottom, I'm waiting for the bottom. Well, you missed it just by a little bit because values are up now in Michigan. Now, if you're, if you write that blog post and they're going, okay, should I buy now? And you're sending that out to all your social media sites, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, now we have Pinterest. You can pin anything you want on Pinterest that is out there. And your friends, family, coworkers, or their friends, family, and coworkers are reading this article and they had just had dinner with you over Labor Day weekend and they, and they heard you were thinking about buying a home, waiting for the bottom, looking at different values, and they see that you wrote this article about how values have increased. Now they're going to go call, call their friend and go, hey, just want to let you know I got, a, I got an email or a blog post from one of my friends who was talking about values have went up in Michigan. That's where these referrals are going to come from. That's where you're going to brand yourself and look like the expert that you already are, but in a consistent basis month in and month out. And I'm telling you, it pays off huge because people talk about it. Every time I go to these border realtor meetings, it's always there's certain people in the room that stand out above and beyond anybody else. But they're not, I mean, I'm not saying anything bad or I don't mean anything bad by this, but there's nothing special about them. They just do special things consistently over and over and over again. And that's why we keep doing these classes is to let you know that this is where the power is at. One is putting up the content. Two is putting it up correctly and then blasting it out there to all your social media sites. We talked about this a couple weeks ago where we said, okay, Facebook is a party. Your blog is your home base. Let's invite them over for burgers. Well, when you're putting up content and they come and visit your blog, they can now set up the RSS feed. They can see what other stuff you're talking about. They can get to know you with videos if you're doing videos, all kinds of really cool stuff. So that's kind of what I want to leave you with. If, you're, if you start to, if you put this in action, I can tell you without a doubt, because I see it over and over and over again, that people are, are killing it with this stuff because they're consistent where nobody else is. You have no competition, and I can, trust me on this, you have no competition. If you do, figure out what they're doing and just do it a little bit better. And then, okay, you'll be, maybe you might be number two in Google, but they're number one. Are you going to get some clicks? Absolutely. Hmm. Is everybody going like to like the number one guy? No. Are you, are you going to get more listings? Keep the listings you have and look like the, I mean, get a ton of exposure while building your brand doing it? Absolutely. Well, and that's uh, that's well said, and that's exactly the gist of it. If you can if you can do and follow the steps on a consistent basis, it will it over time will build credibility. And once you build credibility, you've built trust, a yeah. and you know people want to do business with people that they trust. Absolutely. So. Um I appreciate everybody being here, and here's the thing, you guys have loan officers that invite you to this class, and they, they're just great people, they believe in paying it forward, they Sorry believe in that. staying on top of this technology, tool systems, and strategies, and uh, just you know, give them a call, sit down with them, and, and work on this stuff together. I can't even tell you how much power we have sitting down together, I mean, Paul, you know this, when we meet up, when we have these, these uh, you know, three-on-one, four-on-one, two-on-one, one-on-ones, or whatever, the ideas and the stuff that we implement, and and not only that, hold each other accountable. Yeah, Say, hey. that's that's what I was going to say, Scotty. Is a lot of it, it, a lot of it, you know, everybody has good intentions, but but Absolutely. implementation is a very different thing. It, yes, you know, you're hold, hold the loan officer that invited you here accountable, accountable to help you, office. and yeah. and let them hold you accountable to helping yourselves. Absolutely. I mean, he, here's the thing. Meet with your loan officer, get with them and say, okay, I want you to come up with uh, an article this week. I'm going to come up with one and together we'll share on each other's platforms and see which one, you know, maybe we use both. Maybe we use, maybe we, out of the two, we come up with three or four more. And like, so you're responsible for one, I'm responsible for one, and just do one first. And then every week, okay, what are we going to write on this week? Okay, what are we going to write on this week? Hold each other accountable and have it done. Whether you hire it out or you do it yourself or you go copy someone else's and, and re-spin it. Whatever it is, hold each other accountable for it. And I'm telling you, things will get done because I know if I come in Monday morning and I don't have my article done, I'm going to have an agent that's not very happy with me or vice versa. So it's a great way to have a companion to do it with.
Absolutely, absolutely, Scotty. Thank you so much for uh, for letting me present that today. It's something that I, I find quite fun. I, I I know everybody's looking at if they scratching their head. Fun, get real. <laughs> I, I find it quite fun. Um, once you get into it, once you practice it a couple of times, it you know I'm not a writer. I'm not I. I will never ever be a writer, right. but I find it so easy to put them together now. Now that I've I've thought about it and I, I've done it a few times. Don't don't get me wrong. You're not going to write your first SEO type article, and it's not going to be perfect. And it it you know what? It may not work the first time you do it, but after a few times and it, it gets better, you start to realize the flow and the format and how to put it together, and how to sprinkle yeah. in your stuff the right way, and it just becomes easy, and you become a blog writer. And Absolutely. now you're the you're Absolutely. the one in the office that everybody's saying, "Hey, how did you? How do all your listings always get to the front page of Google?" <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know, Mister Competition? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it'll be too late because you're already there. So, hey, I, uh, I'm just going to take the screen from you for a second. Absolutely. For all you newbies here that are here, so let me just grab this really quick. I want to cover a couple of the sites that we did today really quick. Um, so here they are. So let me just uh, show my screen. Close this down. Close this down. So if you, um, another one that we use is called Content Divas, and this is one where they will write a thousand words for you. Actually, they'll write five thousand words for you for the whole week. So you can check them out if you want. To, if you want an ebook written, that's um, this is our contact. This will you if you want an article, whatever it is. They uh, they have like I think one hundred and seventy people on staff so depending on the article you want to write they will assign it to somebody that specializes in real estate so they're not writing in something they have no idea about it if you want to have an article rewritten go to spunwrite.com and then if you're here for the first time and you have any questions about what we covered today we'd love to hear the questions inside our private Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash agent mastermind and if you ask a question in there, it's not going to be seen by anybody except for the ones that are in the group. So don't worry about your friends or maybe your clients or past clients seeing that you're asking questions on how to build your brand. That's okay because they're not going to see it because we're not going to let them in the group, all right? And, of course, you don't tell them about it. So they don't accidentally request and, and we, you know, we find out about it. So uh, It's a Facebook, great place to mastermind yeah, as well, exchange ideas, you know. Absolutely. Just ask, ask your, ask other. You know, if you've got a question about what others are doing, you know, yeah. that, that's the place for you guys to get together and and exchange ideas. And it's what's cool about it is you'll get, you know, you'll get a top producer in Denver telling, you know, a brand new real estate agent in Fort Lauderdale what she did, yeah, with Facebook and and you right. know what how she did it. It's it's a great format and it's put together for you you guys to be able to exchange ideas and grow your businesses and and get together and and work on these projects and these different things that you're learning on these classes so Absolutely. So three last words I want to leave you with. Consistency. When you start something, continue to do it whether you hire somebody to do it, but do it because that's going to that's going to build your brand. It's going to it's going to make you in the know because people are starting to see your post and content, relevant content. Make it local. Pick videos, pick content that's local to your area, not somewhere else in the world that nobody cares about that. And then accountability. Find an accountability partner that you can look up to that's going to go, "Hey, did you get that done?" and have a list of stuff that you want to accomplish this month the next 60 days, the, the next 90 days, and then for the rest of the year, where do you want to end up from right here? And uh, I'm telling you, man, things will happen. You'll have to do it because they'll be forcing you to do it. And meet, whether you meet for five minutes a day, it's not about, it's not about like shame, shame, shame on you, you didn't do it. It's like, hey, what did you do today? How are you going to accomplish it? And how long is it going to take you to accomplish it? And then I'm going to check back in with you next week to see if it's done. All right? So, Paul, man, I can't even thank you enough for the time and energy you've spent on this thing. I know Thanks. you're not feeling good, and I appreciate you showing up today. <laughs> no problem, and, man. I appreciate um, you guys uh, allowing me to be part of this. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, next week we're gonna do we're gonna have to get into video a little bit because video is so huge. So, we're gonna go peel back the curtains on video marketing and tie into all this stuff and how do we how do you put a video on a blog? How do you put a video on Facebook? How do you put a video? How do you edit it? And how do how do you like um, there's all kinds of stuff we're going to cover next week. So look forward to seeing you right here next week on the Agent Mastermind. Paul, again, man, you've knocked it out of the park. Thank, Thank you, brother. So Have a fantastic week Thanks and today. we'll see you all right back Good. here same time same place next week. Right. Take care everybody. Bye-bye. The organizer has ended the session and this call will be disconnected. Goodbye.